Hey everybody, welcome to the Republic of Gamers. My name is Steve, and today I have a very special build guide. This is gonna be an all AMD, all ROG build on the brand new X570 platform. Now, I designed this build to be a hybrid between gaming and productivity, specifically video editing. So I've made all of my decisions about all the components accordingly. So let's unbox these and we'll get started. All right, so for the CPU, I chose the 3900X. You could probably get away with a 3800X, but in my opinion, the money is more than worth it for the extra cores. Yeah, it's true in purely gaming scenarios, the blue team has a slight frames per second lead. But if we're looking at a hybrid build like this one, it's totally worth it to go with AMD for the extra price performance in multi-threaded workloads. So the 3900X is the best choice for this build. The motherboard at the heart of this build is the Crosshair 8 Hero. This board is one that we chose for a couple of key reasons. It's something that's a bit more premium than our mainstream board, such as the Strix E. There's some things it brings to the table that I'm really interested in for this hybrid build specifically. The first is IO and connectivity. So when we're doing a professional build for productivity, we're gonna be plugging in a ton of peripherals. So having a bunch of USB ports of the latest generation on the back of the motherboard is really helpful just for convenience. Additionally, the Crosshair Hero board has a 2.5G ethernet port. And I'm actually planning to test out a NAS system that also leverages 2.5G. So this is really going to come in handy for me. The Hero also has a beefed up power design compared to our mainstream boards, including an eight phase VRM and teamed 60 amp power stages. Now this will definitely handle the 3900X with ease and it's also well prepared for any other CPUs AMD will launch on this platform in the future. For the graphics card, I chose the ROG Strix RX 5700 XT. This card is purpose-built for 1440p gaming, which is exactly what I want this build to achieve. Now, it's important to note that if you're going to be going for 4K gaming, if that's your intention, uh, or if you're going to be doing some heavy rendering, like GPU-based rendering uh, with your rig, you may need to invest in a different graphics card. Just like your GPU choice, your monitor choice is going to depend on exactly what you need to do with the build. Personally, I would recommend a 27 inch 1440p 144 Hz gaming display with FreeSync. Uh, however, if you are going to be editing 4K video, you will obviously need a 4K monitor. Likewise, if you want to game in 4K, you'll also need a 4K display. So keep that in mind. I will leave a few different options for you down in the description below. In terms of RAM, I went with a 3600 megahertz CL16 kit as this is what AMD has officially recommended as the sweet spot for third gen Ryzen CPUs. Our friends at G-Skill were kind enough to send over some of their Trident Z Neo RAM. So those are the kits I will be using. Uh, you could go with 16 or 32 gigabytes, um, whatever is gonna work for your specific workflow. I would lean more towards 32 gigabytes for this specific build. It's time to talk about storage. PCIe Gen 4 is a big part of the new X570 platform. And because it's so new, we really haven't seen that many peripherals that can take advantage of the new standard yet. However, there are some M.2 drives, such as this one, that have come to the market already. And yeah, you can buy them and check them out. Now, unfortunately, what I found is that while sequential speeds are read and write are really good with the new drives, um, they are better than the previous generation, the random read write performance is not necessarily better. What that means is if you're doing gaming or normal usage of Windows, you're not really going to see any benefits moving from PCIe Gen 3 to PCIe Gen 4. However, if you are moving large video files around like I will be, well, I'm gonna test out the drive and see how it works. 
but for you guys at home, I would probably recommend waiting a bit to see what creative solutions vendors can come up with in the near future for PCIe Gen 4 peripherals. Okay guys, so there are actually a lot more components that go into the build, and I, I just frankly do not have time to go through and explain why I chose each and every component today. However, what I will do is I will leave a full build list of all the components I use in this rig down in the description below. So you guys can check out which components I use and also find out where to buy them. If you have any questions about why I chose specific items, just leave me a question in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. Now, before we get started, there are a few other things you're going to need. Um, you'll want a screwdriver and you also will want a place to store and organize screws as you take things apart and assemble them. Uh, I like to use something like this. You could use a, a magnetic bowl. Either of those would be just fine. If you're going to install Windows, I will have a link in the description on where to go to create a boot media device on a USB stick. Additionally, you should download your GPU and motherboard chipset drivers ahead of time. I definitely would recommend doing that. You probably don't need to worry about your peripherals, but for the motherboard and the uh, graphics card specifically, I would definitely download those drivers ahead of time, have them ready on an external drive. Finally, if you aren't following this build exactly, if you're swapping out some of the components, I definitely recommend you do some thorough checking about compatibility ahead of time. I've done all that for you, so if you're following the build exactly, you don't need to worry about this. But if you're switching out something like the motherboard or you're using a different chassis, uh, you may run into some compatibility issues. So it's definitely worthwhile to research ahead of time. You know, what's the RAM clearance like? How many fan headers do I have on the motherboard? All of these can come into play. Now, without further ado, let's build this rig up. I've already done the preliminary testing and the components work. So let's go ahead and put the build together. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much for this next section. I'm just gonna show you guys how to do everything. If I don't cover something in enough detail, just leave your question in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you guys enjoy the build.
All right, guys, that is the build guide that I have for you today. I left some additional information, some tips and stuff down in the description below. So do check that out. My name is Steve. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.